Hello. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so I'm still learning how to live stream. I'm like, are we on? Is this thing on? <laughs> well, I guess usually a lot of your live streaming experience is actually through, is it Crowdcast? And then it yeah. goes to YouTube. So you're sort of probably used to a third party that is then going to YouTube. Yes. So Kat that is, is the Ecamm master. <laughs> it was, Hello. it was doing a little bit of, uh, yeah, Ecamm coaching blindly today, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> hello, hello, Rob. Hey, Homesick Mac, good to see you. Carol. Yeah. Enlighten me. Still a little dizzy with the grouping feature. Awesome. Hey, Rest Q. Welcome. Cool. I'm curious if others have been uh, maybe binge watching a couple grouping videos yet. I know Kat's got hers. I just posted one as well, just to kind of share the fun ways that we are using this new grouping feature. Hello, Georgia. Hi, Amazing. So Kat, tell me, obviously you're pretty stoked, equally stoked about this grouping feature, but I'm curious, as soon as the grouping feature was enabled, what was the first thing that you did in your space? Where, What were you kind of redoing and, and kind of how has it changed the way that you're working? Well, so one of the things around the timing of the grouping feature and you and I, because we're both ambassadors, we had a little bit of time to play with it in advance. I had literally just spent my, I think, I don't even know how long it took. It probably wasn't that long, but I wanted to set up a personal exercise area where yeah. I wanted to be able to sort of drag and drop some exercises. And I had created this page where I had linked databases. So every single sort of grouping of movements for exercises, I had a separate incident. So I was duplicating. But as you know, when you would create these custom dashboards with multiple linked databases, it takes up a lot of space because you needed to name it. And then you would also see the name of the database repeated over and over again. So I built this whole page. I think I maybe even showed you a picture of it. It's like, yeah, this is what I did. Oh yeah. And then I think a day later is when they re released the beta to some of the ambassadors. And I thought this, this is what I need. Now I can just group all of these. I don't have to create multiple linked databases. It takes up way less space. And it was it was really exciting to start using it right away for a project that I was trying to solve that problem. And then the grouping automatically solved it. What about you? I think the first one for me is probably I have that Horizons dashboard. So just being able to scope the journal access to use the date property was was an interesting one. So I use a lot of yeah. board views with just like a single pane, which is kind of interesting. So we can definitely kind of dig into some of that today and show you guys some of our, our favorite use cases and maybe build yeah. some things, uh, build some things live if people have a specific request of what they want to see. Hello, Wendy. Samuel yeah. was saying, wish I had a few days to play around with the grouping feature and apply what genius I could muster. Awesome. Well, now you have all the days. <laughs> we have it's all here. the days. <laughs> I love it. So I don't know, should we should we dig in a little bit? Like, should we do should we open up one of our screens and start playing? Do you want to show yeah. I know you have your uh, exercise database sort of ready to go. So if you want, we could dive into your because I think yours yeah, is a pretty cool use case. Okay, cool. I thought it was a really simple example. So what I did is I have this exercises database and I had signed up for a weight training program. And I wanted to use notion, obviously, to track which which exercises am I doing on which day. And so before this was all just in a list and now that I have the grouping, so this is grouped by type of movement because that's how I've categorized my different, uh, different things here. So if you take a look at it and you look at this grouping feature, I have it by movement and actually warm up doesn't have anything in it because I haven't filled that out yet, but it's a really nice way to see this. This is gallery view. But I do have, I think I have a couple other ones where by workout, so this would be one example where this is grouping by a relation. So these are actually the workouts. So this is a different table where I have the workout and it's connected to these exercises. And that's one of the ways that I use this grouping feature. And then because this is a board view, I could actually do a subgroup. So if I wanted to subgroup my workouts and maybe look at the movement type, I could do that as well. And I do like to hide the empty groups. I really like that feature a lot. Mm -hmm. And so here you could see if I want to look at every workout broken down into, okay, which exercise movements are squats versus a hinge, a push, a pull, I can start to see this. And the reason that I really like this and wanted to do it anyway, is I wanted to be able to start to build my own workouts using that similar format. 
and now I can do that. And I think, did I have, I have also by movement in the board view. And so this was already there, but if I wanted to, I could actually subgroup this into, let's say which week I'm doing each one. And while it populates that, I can hide the empty groups. Let's hide there. So now I can see, oh, actually some of them don't have a week, <laughs> but I can see in week one, which are the exercises that I'm doing in week two, what are the exercises I'm doing? So I think this is just a really cool example of how you can use some of these. And it's a really, uh, I guess, clean view of everything at once. Question about the way that you've been using weeks. Is this something that now you could actually group by date instead of by a dropdown for each week? Would that change the way that you would set that up potentially? Good question. So I guess I would, uh, let's see, subgroup. I would probably have to add a roll up first, but I could mm -hmm. add a roll up to the workout because the workout can have a date. Now this, I haven't actually rescheduled them, but I think I could. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I was just curious if there was a, a reason that you did that. And I know partly we couldn't do subgroups by, uh, by date before. Yeah. So it just kind of opens up some possibilities. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in this case, it's actually a program where it says, week one, week two, week three. So when I was actually categorizing the program, I did want to just encapsulate, okay, this, you know, workouts one, two, and three belong in week one. And that then, so sense. that's why it says that. But if I assign the workout to a date and then I have a roll up to the exercises to say which day it's on, then I could actually show the dates. Uh, right now, I can't do that because I haven't actually assigned these workouts to the dates in the future, <laughs> but I think I could do it. Yeah. Homesick Mac was asking, could you please show this database before grouping so that we can see which properties are there? Yeah. So let's just show an example of, uh, I'll just show the ones that are part of the workout. So this is the just original, this is the table with all Not of them. So obviously, I have a sort, I was sorted them by movement. But you can see some of the other properties and how this looked. And mostly I wouldn't, once I set it up, I wouldn't go and look at these. I would go into the workout and actually click on the workout. So if I take a look at this one, you can see that I have the exercises linked. I do have a picture of the actual PDF. And then down here, I can just take a look at the reps, the sets. And then I also, where is it? I do have a field for the last weight. Oh, here, you can say the last weight used, which uh, let's, uh, let's hide that. <laughs> <laughs> Always the risk when you're sharing live. Uh. Yeah, so that's, that's what it looked like before. But even the table view, let's group it. I and you could group it in different ways. But the way I was looking at it was let's look at we could do the week. If I want to group it here in the table view you can actually see the weeks, uh, which is, there are a lot in here and I can toggle off that first one. So I could see everything in the table that's part of week one, part of week two, part of week three. And that's a nice way for me to look at it as an overview. I could also in the table, we could change that and group it by the workout. So that relation, but in the table format, I'm gonna hide the no workout. So here I can see my workouts. I could actually, you know, kind of toggle them shut and see i don't know why i'm doing this way <laughs> i saw someone do a feature request wanting to see toggle them all shut toggle them all off i like that that would be really nice but this way i could actually just look at one workout at a time and i can hide obviously whatever i don't feel like if i don't want to see the week i could just hide that i could hide the workout make this a little bit cleaner but yeah that would be another way that you could look at this information yeah let me know homesick Mac, if that makes sense, there's just there's so many options in terms of just collapsing and simplifying how much information you're seeing in one go. So for those of you that have these big tables with lots of properties, it's just a nice way to kind of give yourself just a little scoped view. Um, and again, you can do that with any any uh, view type, right? Like everything, I think, except for the calendar view, you can you can show in these really interesting grouped ways. So you have yes. lots of flexibility. Yeah. Like timeline view think, of tasks grouped by project. That's a really interesting one, I think, for mm -hmm. people that managing lots of multiple projects. Yeah, definitely. I think someone someone here is asking how you might be 
<laughs> what's, what's your favorite use case? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's quite a few. Let me let me open up, make sure it's safe before I open that <laughs> always up. Always <laughs> smart, always smart. I'm sure no one would judge me for uh, the amount of weight that I last lifted. So <laughs> this is a good community, safe place. <laughs> So let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little switcheroo here and make sure that I'm showing the right screen here. Okay, my, I might be a little zoomed out here, but yeah, let me know if you can, you can see this. But I think it's really fun to have more of a visual calendar, like a visual diary. So here I have a board view grouped by day of the week. And that day of the week is a formula. So it's automatically calculated based on the date. I might have to open up a late one just to make sure there's like nothing, nothing scandalous in here, but let's open up a Friday. <laughs> Pretty empty here. So you can see this day of the week here is calculated by really simple formula. And so what I'm doing here in the grouping, this is a board view grouped by, and there is a tweet and a blog post where I kind of broke down in more detail how to do this. So def uh, I can post the link to that after. Uh, but what I'm doing is grouping by day of the week, which is a formula. And if you click on that, it'll ask you to choose exact or alphabetical. So for those of you, um, I did already get questions about this. If you don't choose exact, you're going to get some kind of funny, uh, just a couple letters happening at the top and you're not going to get your actual week. And then I've subgrouped by the date property. Open this up. Oh, hang on a second subgroup by date and you again you can choose what kind of date you want to you want to go by and cut i chose off a little bit on the oh. on the screen share it looks like oh i might have to uh i don't want to mess with my <laughs> mess with yeah. my ecamm <laughs> while we're live but uh hopefully you know you can sort of get the uh get the idea of what's happening there but this the Grouping is by day of the week formula and the subgrouping is by week and that allows me to view a very visual calendar and I like being able to see this information in this way. So I, I think that's such a cool use case being able to do this um, auto day of the week. What's nice about this too is for task management as well, right? You can you can show um, a Kanban board by day of the week instead of having to manually choose your day of the week if you do also use the calendar view. So. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty fun. Happy to share um, other use cases like the Horizons dashboard, I think is a safe one, <laughs> I think. We're Let's about double to find check. out. And hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, I did hide, hide a few things here and I might zoom out just a little bit so you can kind of get a better sense of what's actually happening here. But I have a database for each sort of time scale. So daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. And these are all also grouped by date. And in this case, um, it's relative date. Date is today. Yeah. And the reason I do this uh, basically single Kanban board view instead of galleries, because you might have noticed Notion has that huge plus that they add as soon as you use the gallery mode. So it's purely for aesthetic purposes that I'm choosing. <laughs> this layout here. Well, and I think one of the nice things about that is before you had to sort of find workarounds in order to get what you're looking for. So I don't know if you want to explain to people why this simplifies it or maybe what you were doing before to get that single day versus now. Yeah, let me see if I can open up a single journal here. So this is a pretty pretty simple view here, right? You're seeing that it's just a filtered view of this one, but what I used to have to do, so like let's say I open up a Friday template. What I used to have to do was every single day of the week had to have this day property assigned to it. Um, and it's baked into the template and that's fine. But again, it's just a lot of the previous workarounds that we had to do force you to kind of manually choose one of these select properties. And if you if you missed out on that, you'd often have these, you know, stray entries that would kind of disappear. So now I instead of grouping by that day property, I'm grouping by day property. So you can see this is a single select. I used to have to select by this. I haven't deleted those properties yet, just for whatever reason, in case there's any reason I might need to, to still use it. So I'm kind of testing out this system um, and just sticking to a really simple uh, organizing by relative date property. So 
similarly, like the week had to have this week. So I, I could always filter to just show this particular week by board view. I'm not sure if that if that makes sense, but it's hard to show without showing some actual information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, and actually, um, that's a really nice thing as well. If you want to share your screen and you have some of these groups set up the toggle to be able to close things and open things, that's also a nice way to control what it is that you you are and aren't sharing. So you can maybe just check one toggle instead of having all of them open and worrying what people are going to look at. And Absolutely. it can help it can help you focus by maybe only having a toggle or two open that you need to look at. I think I saw on Twitter a few people sharing screenshots of their tasks broken into projects and group by project. And then you had this wonderful ability to just close some of the projects you're not working on. Yes. You don't need to make the projects disappear. Good call. <laughs> but you can just, just focus on that one, that one project at a time. It's less overwhelming. And I think our brains appreciate the toggle with the groups. I might even uh, show an example of that too on my space, but just again, want to make sure that uh, those properties are are safe <laughs> to show that. So yeah, I think I will, I think I'm good here to show this. What I'm going to do is show an example of my today page. Okay, so I've been playing with these different views, obviously, so you're going to see a whole bunch of, you know, filters here that I will go back and clean and delete once I'm ready, but I'm showing examples of, okay, what if I grouped a table view by only top priority focus and grouped by X? And so each of these is basically like a grouping and a subgrouping. So let's look at Cal uh, by project. I don't know if this one's grouped actually. Oh yeah, it is grouped here, right? So I can hide these and say, oh, I don't want anyone to know that I'm, I've got a workout plan on there. Oh, my live stream with Kat, <laughs> right? So you can- we, we, we want to see your last weight that you lifted. <laughs> no big deal. Um, yeah, so again, this is table, table grouped by project. I can do uh, just today, there we go, just today's uh, focus, right? And this is filtered to only show me stuff where the project is is a uh, hot, hot priority, right? It's got a couple of these different ones. I think status is an experimentation too. Like I'm deciding whether I want to do a, um, a single select or a relation for the status. So there's a couple different options here. Yeah, and I don't know if we have, have one set up, but do you want to explain why, like why you might be leaning towards a status relation, so having a database that's just the status versus having statuses in every individual database. Yeah, and I wonder if I, I'm going to see if I have a page already set up like this that I could safely show that. But one of the drawbacks I've noticed, I don't know if you've played with this idea of a sort of central status database where you could say, show me tasks that are related to this active status, show me projects that are active, show me issues that are active. So it's kind of a neat way that you can make use of the same status, but see everything in your space that relates to that status. But one of the things I noticed is in a board view, uh, Notion automatically hides any that I think are empty. So if you, the dragging between columns is not as easy. So there are some things like that where you're like, mm, okay. it's like close, it's not quite there, but there are some refinements that might make it a little bit better. Yeah, so I guess the, because you really would want to see that in the board view because it has grouping and subgrouping because you're grouping by the relation across the top, but then you want to subgroup by the different yes. databases, correct? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there are some, yeah, there's some interesting pros and cons there. I don't know if I have one set up that I can safely play with without showing, um, like I, I know Samuel, you were curious about the pros and cons of a status relation there too. Um, Obviously mine right now is connected to issues database projects and tasks, and I, I might not have a clean example of that. Um, but one thing I'm trying to consider using that status relation for is only active stuff. So it's almost like they get cleared out when, once they're no longer active. So that status, if you ever went to that status database, you're only ever seeing the, the, the most active ones in that status, if that makes sense. It's hard, it might yeah. be hard to explain well, without an example. And sometimes, I mean, you could, that's an example where if you had a database, a status database that was related to different views, you could create, I mean, it's not like filters are gone or that linked databases are gone. You could still create them, but then have have those subgroups, even if it's not in board view. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try one here on, on my end anyway, just to see if I can uh, group this in a safe, viewable way without <laughs> exposing any information. So give me a second here. And I see just in the chat, there's, does anyone know that where there's a list of which views you can use that which, so uh, every view except calendar allows grouping and the board view is the only one that currently allows subgrouping where you can have groups, you, basically columns and rows. And as for what you can use to group, I'm pretty sure it's everything except roll up. Is there anything else that's not yeah. available? I think it's just roll up. I think every other property. Yeah, it can't group by roll up. That would be that would be very handy. <laughs> um, so here's an example of a status of a relation instead of by that drop down. But so the problem here is it will only show you stuff that is that has a property assigned to it. So I can't actually drag this into hold or complete. Yeah, uh, which is kind of annoying. So kind of you kind of miss that benefit of the board view by being able to to drag things around. So that's kind of inconvenient that way. So there might be a better way to to do this. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Board view yeah. Oh, has grouping. Mm -hmm. yeah, or so just that just... I tried to group by a roll up one day. I do hope one day, <laughs> one day. the roll up would be the roll up would be helpful. I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> well, again, it's it's almost like with the with the formula view. So let's say, for example, I hope it. I'm always like, oh, I hope this is safe. Let's show the weekly. You can always, view. You can always go back to the two of us before you show. It. <laughs> I like to live on the edge, cat. <sighs> a little bit of an adrenaline rush for the for the Friday live stream. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so here's here's another example. So under this week, I'm experimenting with this a little bit. Uh, so I have a day of the week view where this is specified by formula, right? And so because that is specified by formula, I can't drag this onto Tuesday because the formula is based on the date itself. So if I open, I have to open this up, change the date or switch to a calendar view, change the date and that sort of thing. So I can imagine with the rollup, rollup is based on other information. So you wouldn't be able to kind of move things by rollup. So it makes yeah, sense. That right? makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And since this is late, maybe we'll do that tomorrow <laughs> instead and that, that you'll see that will show up now on Saturday. So you, again, there's that, you benefits and like pros and cons of each approach but if you are doing an automatic uh day of the week by um formula you won't be able to drag so that's why i have a couple different views set up for myself move it back to calendar view like when you're in planning mode and then go back to that uh formula automation mode for for calendar view so yeah and i guess really then the two the two that are still probably the best way to quickly move dates would be a calendar view or the timeline view has date related things that you can move exactly. around a little bit. And that's, those are really designed for you to focus on the timeline versus status, et cetera. It's not related to the date. Cause even a board view, if it, even if it did use true dates, I mean, then you, you might as well be using the calendar, which is actually exactly. connected to the date. Yeah, exactly. It's meant to sort of solve for people that I like that, you know, next later sort of look and feel of the board view, but also wanting it under that of the week yeah I, I almost feel works. like the maybe the the idea of a status database might almost be better for just going to that status database and seeing everything across but yeah as you said there are some definite drawbacks to not being able to drag something between your status which is a workflow most people are pretty familiar with definitely yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the one of the favorite ones I really like is that, you know, immersive and uh, process work too. So if I want to tuck this away and say, just show me all the stuff that I kind of need to get done to get something back to other people. If I'm outsourcing something and someone's waiting on something for me, then I can kind of close all these sort of immersive and writing and stuff that is, is important, but I can't do right now and just show yeah. this kind of stuff and then tuck that away. Great. Now I'm ready to to dive in, do my live stream with Kat, which is like super high focus, high energy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to move all the uh, ecam parts. Exactly. Well, so one of the things that I also really like about this grouping feature is, you know, before, if you wanted to sort of, let's say that I'm just going to pick an example. Let's say you have some financial information, maybe like your expenses or recurring fees, and you wanted to look per quarter. 
before, if you wanted to calculate the total, you would have a filter and maybe just say, show me everything that's quarter one. And you might have a few different views and you could drop down those views. Well, now I love that the grouping also allows you to do those calculations on numbers. Oh, yeah. So you could actually have one table open with every single quarter and it could have the calculations by that subgroup. I think that's also a love really that. exciting change and something that, that I think is uh, one, one of the other features that is really everything's exciting, but that's another that. exciting one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. And I'm partly wishing like, oh, do we have a, like a test bed with something like that where we could kind of show with the quarters and, and such. And I don't know if we do, but I'm just going to well, open up. I have an yeah. example. I'll have to find it, but I have an example that I showed it on my demo, but with, it's not, not necessarily with quarters, but for my tech gear, I kind of showed how yeah, you can yeah. Total the cost of something in those subgroups. So let me mm -hmm. pull that up and I'll tell you when I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I had it here. And it was also very yes. jarring to look at uh, for, let me. So I think I had a table view by type. Yeah, here we go. So if you want to share my screen. So this was an example that I put together where I have everything here is, we'll see grouped by type. So you can see these toggles. This is the type of stuff that I have. And here beside the little that. number, and I know this is kind of small. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. And I'm almost scared to show these numbers, but <laughs> you have, when you click on this here, you have the option to you know, do you want to count how many things are in each group, which is really helpful, but to be able to actually total if, and it'll show you which ones it can sum. So it would be number fields. And if I click on price, which I have here, you can see each group and what's the total price. So it'd be a similar concept with the core each quarter and also the filter. Oh yeah. This is the stuff that's in use. Yes. This is, <laughs> this is a lot of money in my home yeah. studio, but that's an example that I think is really helpful and you can see it collapsed or when you open it, you can actually see the sum will show up here as well. You can see it at the bottom of the table before you would have to that. create different views or you would have to create linked tables each on their own, depending on how you want to see the information. So I think this is really great. That's an awesome use case. Uh, can you tell us, is it calendar view for planning? Yeah, I think when I'm in planning mode, I would I would probably move it back to a calendar view. And then I think you might do this too, Kat, where you have the same, it's like you've got your tasks in a calendar view, and then you've got a list of tasks that are maybe uh, overdue or undated or anything like that. And I would kind of shift and shuffle things around when I'm in calendar view. Is that kind of how you would think of your task planning? Yeah, I I use the calendar view for my tasks every single day. So I when I'm focused and I want to just focus on what's today, I just am looking at a summary of what are the things that have today's date. And then I always, though, on that same page, I can scroll down and see it. And one of the things I force myself to do is I have my calendar view and it's filtered so that and I personally have my tasks as a, just a checkbox of done or not. I know other people have a status. And so it would work the same for only show things that are not done. And I can't let myself have anything in the past. So it's sort of like saying if it's in the past and it's not done, it cannot live there. <laughs> I can't yeah. go backwards. So it forces me to find a new home. And one of the things that that usually does is I'll be able to look at the days where there's a task that's specifically relevant to that date. And I also do have my events with my tasks. So I can see if I have a really busy day, it's going to make me really think where I'm going to drop this if it needs to have a date assigned to it. If it doesn't, I can sometimes clear the date and realize this is not actually going to happen today. So I use the calendar view every single day. I love that. So uh, in terms of your planning, too, is that something you do like at the end of the day if something didn't get done? You're going back to that calendar view and you're not letting anything kind of lag yeah. on the calendar? Discipline. Occasionally, I it. <laughs> I, it's a couple of days. where, but But I'm pretty good that at least... If not once a day, within a couple of days, I will make sure everything has moved. And that's also a good reminder for recurring events because I do have some recurring tasks that I, instead of clicking, I never click done, I will just move it to the next date if it's something that I do on a regular basis. And so it forces me to say, okay, that's that now goes to the next date. 
I love yeah. that. And it touches upon the sort of uh, daily review and weekly review, right? So by the time mm-hmm. you get to the end of the week, look at the things that maybe didn't get done throughout the week and just making sure that you have a plan for how those are going to get redistributed to the next week. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of it's just habit, habit development and habit forming for sure. I love that. Nothing in the past. Uh, and yeah, Patrick, this would be so great for monthly financials. I think there's there's so much room here. I know a lot of folks have asked and have been trying to recreate YNAB inside of Notion. And I think this grouping feature kind of makes some of that a little easier where you could say, uh, show me show me my expected budget compared to what was actually spent and you can do a better job comparing in different categories. Well, and I think if we take a look at a board view, let's see. So the board view also, we could do a similar thing if I go across the top. I can sum the price and I could go here and I could sum the price in two different ways. So right now I've got how much am I using regularly, but also I can see in the groups what it is. And if I want to see the actual details, I can see what's in my studio and, but I've got the two different totals, which is kind of interesting. Like what's the software total and what's the everything in use total. Mm, Interesting. Which, which could also be interesting. I, I don't I don't personally, the only thing I do expense wise is I will track my recurring annual and monthly expenses. So I can, and I say which date a recurring payment is going to come out. So I've mm. got that, but I do track all my expenses outside of Notion. Um, and, but, oh no, actually I do a little bit. I, I do have a database set up for my profit first allocations so that all I have to do is just populate the amount of money and it automatically will calculate how much goes into each of my profit first accounts. So I do use a little bit, but it'd be cool to play around with the use case. Yeah, I I feel like it's only once you kind of get in there and you just experiment with the different views that you'll kind of get a feel for like, oh, I could also do this in this other database. Love it. Uh, And yes, apologies. There is definitely a dog snoring very loudly behind me. Uh, If I kick her out of the office, then she barks to come in. So we just, it was a compromise. (laughs) I hope it's not too loud. I actually can't hear it. I'm, I'm really surprised. Or maybe I'm just, (laughs) that's so weird. Everyone else can. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's so loud. Um, Fun. Is there another use case that people would like to see? Uh, we could even, you know, build something new. We can share share something different. But uh, let us know if there's something specific you'd like to see us do. I know that we have this fundraising OS uh, dashboard that I found in one of Notion's articles that I thought, you know, if we wanted to play with some real data, we could we could maybe do something in there. But uh, want to make sure if folks do want to see something, you know, specific or or want to see something in action, let us know. Awesome. Oh. Mochi says hi. I think I maybe just heard some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I am glad I am glad to get a little validation of my studio cost that it's in use regularly. So there's a good ROI. So that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it puts things in perspective. Oh my gosh. Even to look at, uh, well, I mean, library is another great use case for this too, right? So as we are taking courses and we're you know buying all sorts of different. Uh, resources, templates, and whatever online, and just looking at how much do we spend on our education after yeah. academia. There's still a lot of uh, investment going on. And you could do, and for those of us who, I know you and I are both uh, what are we, perpetual course takers, might be the kind way to say it, that you could also have a board view of status, and then you could do the cost grouping of the things. Ooh. And so you could see all the things you maybe have paid for, but haven't actually finished. Oh, I like maybe that. Maybe that would light light a little bit of a fire <laughs> to get some done. Yeah, it's like, don't look at your wish list until you've looked at the stuff that you've uh, maybe already purchased and haven't yet consumed. Yeah, as Stacey yeah. was just asking about uh, any ideas for the library databases, maybe that's one that we could show. Uh, Patrick was asking about the multiple sums or totaling. I'm curious. Um, I know we talked a little bit about that, uh, but I think each column and each subgroup can only have one, one yeah, sum. You have, to, you have to decide and it can only be one. So when I change it up here, if I just say count all, that will change to the number in that and it goes across. So every single column in the board will change. So it's not like you can say, I want to see the total of the software, but I want to see how much hardware it's you. It's kind of all or nothing, but you can see here 
that I can have a different calculation across the top and I can pick a different here. So if I wanted to say, what's the range of price, then I could see, although I wish it would actually show the minimum and maximum together, not just the, the stretch of money, but mm -hmm. you can't have everything. But alas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these can be different, but across the, they'll all be the same. Like once you change it, it'll change across the whole row or the whole column, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we should. Uh, I feel like we should probably co-create some kind of template for some of the, we get a lot of the financing and budgeting questions and it'd be cool to put aside a suggested approach with a couple different views mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, the library one is definitely, I think, a pretty interesting one. And I think I've seen a few people's YouTube videos share that too. But um one thing I think is kind of interesting is grouping courses by tags. If you use master tag databases, I mean, it's a very long page. It ends up being like A through Z of every tag that you've ever got in there. But there's there's just a lot of interesting possibilities there. So I'm just opening up my my courses by status just to see what this um, yeah to see what this looks like. I could maybe I know I I immediately for the library applied the dates, grouping it by. I think a relative mm. dates so I could see the last seven days, the last month. And, and that was really helpful for me to see when I've collected things and also helpful for a weekly review because when you add stuff, you don't necessarily always want to look at it in that order, but when you want to go through and kind of clean up what you've just added, that's a nice way to. And so do you do that by uh, show me everything that I've collected in the last seven days or have like most recently edited or accessed in the last seven days when you're doing your For the library, mm -hmm. I actually, I could, uh, I could do a demo if you want to hide my screen temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> um, I, I actually just have it sorted that way. I think that's one of the first things now that shows up on my library, but let me just check and this is where i wish they would just have that close all toggles at once but I can... yeah and uh, similarly patrick I'm, I'm gonna set up my courses page too just to kind of share how i would do this for knowledge management and then kat can share hers too and maybe we can come up with an interesting use case let's see and i have i guess i haven't been adding as much to my library as i thought so you can show i won't show all the details of it but if you want to show my screen <laughs> You can oh, see, oh, that's your screen. Good. So what mm. I did for date, so I have group and it's group by last edit. So the last time I touched that and it's reverse chronological. And this is set up in relative terms, I believe. So anytime you click on your group and if it's, if it's got a time relationship, when you click on it, that's where it gives you those options. So I chose relative for this. And I like that because it does have, have you added anything today, yesterday, last seven days, 30 days. And so you can see sort of when things have been gathered when I was maybe a little bit more actively Ambitious. contributing to my library. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess I could do the, the cost, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Interesting. So that's one way to see your library information. Well, the, the summary too, one thing that could be interesting is I like to... Uh, from my library database, I have relations to my notes database as well. And I like to look at which of these have the most notes created, because then that's probably a little bit more active. So you could do a sum of like, ooh, which ones have the most the highest number of attached notes or something yeah. like that. Because you be would have, so you would have a, either a rollup or calculation of how many notes. And so that would be one of the values. Although if it's a roll up, I don't know if you can, if that'll show up as an option. So you might have to have a formula to Let's turn it see. into a number. Yeah, I have a bunch of, uh, let me see some of my roll ups. I, I have a C also. So any, I count up any related posts too. So you can sum by number of related items. You can sum by, oh, another one I like do you, to do, do is you wanna, are, you, are you ready to show your screen? I don't know, but let's try it. <laughs> okay, let's see. I just opened up one of these items in my my database here. Uh, so this one hasn't got a ton added to it. Like I haven't connected all the different properties. Um, but one of the things I like to do as well is I use a skills database, um, teaching and facilitation. And I think there's a skills roll-up as well. Yeah, skills roll-up. So one thing I like to do when I'm reviewing, um, 
reviewing all the courses that I've signed up for, like as part of my weekly and monthly review. I like to view by those that have the most skills because again, it means like that's probably a higher priority program, project, something yeah. like that. So like I think, you know, Kat, your course, um, your Elevate, your presentations was in here and it was, this is what teaching and facilitation, this is technical skills, this is, uh, you know, I had a few in there. And so I always like to connect when I when I do invest in a course, I like to say, what skills is this helping me build? And then what are the notes that I'm creating along the way? Yeah. So this one's not as, as filled out, but I think there are some really interesting possibilities here if you've got some, some roll ups here to count all. And so um, you can, you can sum that? I do have a roll up. I wonder. I don't have a roll up in my library, apparently. Let's see if we can do a, a more interesting and helpful. Hold oh. on. Is there is there a way oh, to, to expand and close all the toggles? I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. This is fun. Now I can now I can view my courses by skill. <laughs> I can scroll through and be like, oh, all my gardening resources, all my hiring resources. This is fun. And then we can drag them around quickly and easily. Oh, there's gonna be a lot here, so I won't I won't show all of that, but um definitely some fun that you could have here. What else could we group by? Status, skills, theme day. That's another one too. Theme day is pretty. Um, so if you have something that you're trying to regularly in a recurring way, do your studying over and over again. Uh, we've got these day of the week relations. I know Kat, you use that in, in your space as well, the day of the week. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's other use cases that you're using for that that would be interesting. Well, to I'm show. using my, my yeah. little celebrate the end of my yeah do day. you want to show any of that <laughs> let me so uh i can let me just find it first i also want to make sure i'm not showing so i have it at the end of my daily me's which is my daily review let me show and, your screen switch to yours. uh not yet oh no. <laughs> let me know when you're ready not yet. Uh, yeah exactly rescue actually, don't i don't, don't mind prices. i don't mind showing this so yeah it's showing a few of tomorrow's tasks but that's okay it's saturday so <laughs> if you want to share my screen i have at the bottom of my daily means so, so one of the last things i want to do is i like to order things the day before so i have this little order so that i can when i see my list i can actually know that i've put some thought into what's the very first thing i'm going to do tomorrow but so Kat, how do you know that. how you're going to feel first thing in the morning <laughs> Uh, well, it usually means you better get this done. <laughs> fair, fair. I could always change it. And sometimes I don't always follow it, but it is kind of a nice way to think about my day. And so at the bottom, I created a little, so this is an inline gallery database called You Did It, Cat. <laughs> and this is a pretty long page. So I really do have to go through the whole daily review in order to actually get to it. Mm. And so I have just a gift by each day so I filtered it where it only shows up if it matches the day of the week so I have seven I did see that Stacy is doing 606 or 365 days which is mind-blowing and amazing and so I have each one I, this I name it something fun for me so buddy is excited is the name of it I have it linked to Friday this is a related table and someone I shared this on Twitter and someone had pointed out why are you doing a relationship? You could just use a select tag. And it's because I already have a day of the week database. So instead of recreating all the select tags, I just link it because now I can, because I can. <laughs> so I have that day of the week. I just connect it here. And so the formula that I have, if we look at, or sorry, it's a roll up. So the formula happens in the other database. And so this just shows whether it's today or not. And then that shows me, I just have the GIF here in the body. And in case anyone's curious, I can show, if I remove this filter, you'll see all of them. So these are the ones I chose. <laughs> it's a lot when you see all of them happening at the same time. But uh, yeah, these are, <laughs> this is, what did I say for this one? What did I name this? Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so that would be for fans of... <laughs> If only there was a way to kind of nine nine. 
scale up uh, depending on how much you got done that day. Maybe you deserve to have a whole gallery of <laughs> high fives for you. Oh, well, maybe there is. Does anyone have a anyone have an idea for a formula that will do that? It's like that would be if, really if some if some of tasks, if the count is five plus, then you could show something different. Oh, man. Oh, I might have oh, to play no. with that. Dangerous. I might have to play. And then, I oh, I see that. the question is order the priority of actions. So this has evolved. When I first set up my task database, I had, um, I really was trying to do sort of what's my big three. So that's based on Michael Hyatt, free to focus. He's a really big advocate for what are the three things that are the most important thing. So like your three big projects for the week, your three best, your biggest tasks. And so I had initially only had three of these <laughs> and it was my way of just saying, what are the most important things that have to happen today? But then I, I started to realize that I liked seeing things in order. And an example is that every Thursday morning, I trim my live stream from the day before. And that's not necessarily the most important thing that has to happen that day, but I wanna make sure that I do it right away. And I like to see it at the top of my list. So I was like, oh yeah, it only takes a few minutes and I get it done and then I start the rest of my day. So now I just use it to order things so I can just see them in the order that I would like to do them. It's not hard or fast. Like today, I don't think I followed much of the order, but I usually have some of those quick things that I have to do on certain days listed as number one for that day. Nice. So it has evolved. I like that. And uh, Rest Key was asking, can we randomize this? I'm assuming that was about the, the you did it post. And I, I think Red Gregory has a post on randomizing You'd probably have to have a couple other fields to be able to, to do something like that in a more random way. Yeah. Yeah, that probably would. I think I'm probably just going to rotate some when I got sick of Buddy. Well, I don't know if I'll get sick of Buddy, but well, maybe maybe in January I will choose to just replace Buddy with another one. Um, I mean, there are multiple ways you could do this. I like that idea, though, of exploring the it depends on what you did that day. That could be pretty cool. I could also have one after I say how I felt that day. I could have it connected maybe to my feelings. Ooh, yeah. There's lots of things you could do to have fun with it. Still still discovering. I'll feel like, yeah, I'll, I'll encounter one use case and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could totally go back to this other one and view that by some really obscure property. But it, I don't know, it's fun. I find from a like a personal development perspective, it's really interesting just to be like, oh yeah, I can actually use the data that I've been collecting for so long in terms of that mm -hmm. feeling database and all that, so. I think it would be kind of cool because I like to track my practices for the day and it might be interesting to create an automation or kind of automate the GIF you see based on which practices because the practices are all supposed to be things that support me in different ways so it'd be kind of cool to do that as well like how have you treated yourself well today and then you can hey you can like have that. that and that might be better than focusing on tasks because then it focuses entirely on productivity but i actually think we're more productive when we take care of ourselves so i think i would personally I like prioritize that. you know if you are if you've checked off a bunch of practices that you have done to to like honor yourself today you get a certain gif and maybe depending on which type of practices you did you get different ones i really like that idea and obviously i'm going to be implementing that this weekend i'm curious what your process is for uh checking off your practices is that sort of loose uh icons or sort of check boxes inside of I'll a journal i'll show you if you want yeah. to hide the screen for a moment <laughs> you don't like living on the edge like me just like what's going to happen when i screen share yeah no <laughs> Um, actually, okay. Actually, I haven't, I haven't filled it out today, so I could show you this. Awesome. Okay. So if you share my screen, you'll see this is higher up in my, oh, that's yours. <laughs> I'm learning Ecamm. Hold on. <laughs> you should have mastered your stream deck. <laughs> you failed my course. No, I'm just kidding. So I have my kind of check-in on my day. So I have... And I've just, it's the same database in two different ways. And the first one I kind of focus on just kind of reflecting. And then this one's more, okay, what was notable, challenges, et cetera. And this is really blown up. So it doesn't have every single thing in here. But under practices, 
I will just go here and I'll check off all the ones that I have. And so you can see these are personal to me, but you can see the type has like create or express yourself, calm your body, expand your mind, um, honor your body, escape with intention. And what else do I have? Connect with others, um, address your blind spot. So you can see there are patterns, some, some show up more than others. So I will just go through and I will click on the ones that I did today. And I have them color coded depending on which category they fall into. And so I picked the ones that I knew were going to, to help me. And I do have some, you can see if it says practice, that's a template so that I can quickly add some new ones. So am I connecting with others, expanding your mind, escaping, calming, addressing a blind spot, uh, create or express and honor your body. So that's, uh, there are some that I clearly <laughs> need to do, Don't do more as than others. others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. What's, what's fun about that too, is those practices, then you could embed those at the bottom of your, your daily me's and say, yeah. uh, I guess show by roll up and date includes today. And then you could have yeah. a beautiful little gallery of whether it's mm -hmm. funny memes or, or like even inspiring yeah. phrases or like whatever. Well, and I do Clouds. have a little, if you, if you, because I don't want to live on the edge, if you want to hide this for a moment, I do have a thing called getting uh start it's like starting first things first, I believe is what I call it, where, and actually I did not do it today. So we could show, Hey, hey, <laughs> let's, we can show it. So I have a page called first things first, and I am supposed to start my day by, you know, did I go for my morning walk? So I actually, I did do that today and I will set an intention for the day and I'll add some gratitude. And then here, because I often do my daily summary at the end of the work day, not the end of the day day, I will actually go back and then I will fill out these things. So did I take my supplements? Did I close my rings for my Apple Watch? Then I do have some practices, but I can add more if I did something in the evening. I have a roll up of the number of practices I did and then the practice types. And I can kind of, you know, drag that if I want to be able to see it a little bit can better. You, I also have entertainment here. I can't remember if I don't think you can. Uh, let's try. Let's see. Yes. Look at okay. that. I like that. I think that's a change that they made. Yeah. Cool. That's great. And then I, th so then I can do this because I also have like for entertainment. Did I watch something or enjoy? Yeah. So, and yesterday I did. So let's look up. I know I watched this yesterday. <laughs> there. So Love that's, uh, that. that's how I kind of check in on kind of my evening. And also I did do these things yesterday, so I can check those off. <laughs> you might be inspiring me to bring back the first things first page because I had a sort of startup page. I found I wasn't really going to it, but I actually like the idea of pulling in yesterday's journal too, just to kind of make sure, because one thing I'd like to get out of the habit of is that sort of late night, fill out my journal right before bed and not using tech before bed. So I like this as sort of a, before you start, just reflect on what happened yesterday and how you want to set the tone for the day. So I might yeah. be convinced to bring it, bring it back to life. Yeah. I love oh, that. the laundry. So yeah. So <laughs> I see, I see in the comments, just trying to get laundry done weekly. I don't do laundry every day, but if I do laundry, I want to give myself credit. Hey, um, hey. I consider that. So I actually, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that everybody put like some of the practices that I have under, um, what do we call them? So the ones called address your blind spot. So I have dusting, I have cleaning the floors, tidy spree, the, like these little things are because I, me personally, domesticity is a blind spot. It does not come naturally, but every time I intentionally go about doing that, I will feel better. Like yeah. I feel like it clears my mind, but I have to work at it. It is not natural where there are some people that that actually comes naturally to them and whether they consider that a self-care practice or not, I don't know, but I would say that you know, that's why it's so personal to you. But whenever I, and that's why I called the category addressing your blind spot, because for me, I always feel so, so much better when I actually do those things, but it takes work. And so I want to give myself credit when I do those things. I freaking love that. I never thought to include some of that stuff in my 
practices database. And I, I feel very similarly like, oh my gosh, I, I have folded my laundry. I need a high five. I need a celebration. Somebody yeah. pour me a glass of wine. So absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Love that. <laughs> Thank you oh, for showing the domestic. The, Georgia says, I like the practice type escape with intention. Yeah, I, that was, I also like that because it's fun to escape but do it mindfully like i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna enjoy a movie or i you know i'm gonna watch this show or something and, and it's you're choosing to do it not just are you still watching <laughs> i love that hey mike Wendy said, testing up, choosing daily practices within the journal page each day end of the day i sometimes have to remove some since i didn't quite achieve some yeah that is kind of an interesting way after. of doing it yeah. yeah, I always I always add it after and I will I will be fully honest the intention when I look back at my intention for the day later a lot of the time I did not do it like if uh, this week I think a couple of times I tried the intention to focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> nope, that was cute that I thought I could do that and uh... <laughs> and hey sometimes we just we set the intention because we know it's a thing that we need to work on and that's okay. Exactly. Right? 100%. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. I, I was playing with a very, like a similar concept. Uh, I think I've shared this before, which is the mood, uh, the mood page where, you know, you could say, how are you feeling today? And so if you did do a check-in in the morning and you're like, I'm feeling overwhelmed, oh no. Let's say I choose overwhelmed. Uh, then the feelings database is like, da-da, like go, go for a walk, take a deep breath, go dance with your steezy classes, go fill out your gratitude journal. And I could definitely see if you wanted to, just replacing that with a GIF instead. So if I open up Overwhelmed, I can scroll down and maybe there should be a, a little GIF here instead. So that's that's another playful way that you could incorporate this kind of thing into other other parts of your space. But yeah, lots of... Wait, why, why can't I hear you suddenly? Did I? That's because oh. I <laughs> muted myself to take a sip of water so that people don't have to hear me gulping. <laughs> and I, I was forgot like, what did I do? It back on that was not you that was me <laughs> oh and i was like uh how can we bring this back to the grouping feature i would love to know maybe from people who are here with us mm -hmm. how they've been using grouping. is there something that has just how how has this made your life easier i know i got a text uh from uh my friend who's also in notion mastery who just said how did you live without this before <laughs> because um, she's just getting into using it regularly and I laughed because I thought yeah I mean we had to do a lot of workarounds to see the information in this way and now with the grouping it's almost like how did we you know function it, before it chops so much time off of your your builds and just making dashboards that really make sense for you so much faster oh and, and Mike, Whoa, Mike has not used it oh with with your uh your filming and your assets. And I just think there's, there's going to be so much fun, Mike, once you get in there and start exploring and uh, like status oh, of, didn't, yeah. Didn't, he didn't know. Okay. Oh, well, now you that's know. Exciting. <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> and yeah, Alfredo, get that mood database in your life. Uh, well, it's, it's actually just the feelings database and so that's connected to my journal. And I think Kat, you do that too, right? The feelings, is that something that so you do? My, yeah, I, have feelings in my journal, but they are a multi-select. So I have not set up. I do like, I know I've seen yours where you have them and kind of categorized too, right? So yes. I think that's really, so you can group your feelings. Um, that would be, a, actually the grouping feelings would be a really nice way to quickly create a groupings database because as you're brainstorming, you can have those overarching categories and then just kind of fill in the different words for that. Here's, um, I can hide hide some of these, but I can order my feelings by frequency. And of course that's based on, on journal. So I've used, you know, focused, grateful this many times. And then we, you know, I could set up a, a better group here to say, show it by uh, tag, show it by underlying emotion. There's lots of possibility here. There's lots of, uh, lots of nerdy fun stuff you can do once you, once you're tracking that data, it's like, ooh, now what could I? Yeah. Well, and, and because now you can group by relation, so you could take your journal and you could group by those feelings across the top and see all those different dates uh, that you felt a certain way. Yes. 
Yeah. And is there, I've done that before too, like showing my journal by how many days I felt in flow and how many times have I used this word and checked this box and also the win the day property. Did I do the one most important thing of the day? And then that way it's very clear, like, oh, like Thursdays are that focus day, or I shouldn't schedule meetings on this day because clearly I'm just way more energized on these days. And so you can just start to really adjust your, your scheduling when you, when you pay attention to the patterns, I think you just get a lot more insight and, like I know some some folks don't get nearly as excited about uh, this level of tracking, but I do think it's it's a lot of insight and information that can really help you better plan. And I would say my initial my initial um, I guess mindset when I first got into Notion when it came to tracking is start with almost nothing. Like I really did. So I did not have a journal for the first six to eight months that I was using Notion. Because I knew that if it's too much too soon, I will not do it. I'll feel guilty because that's my entire track record is I've got this great idea. I'm going to do all this stuff and then I don't do it. And then I feel bad about myself. So I started with a gratitude and just kind of each week checking in. How did the week go? And that was a good way for me to start. And then as I got more comfortable and started to realize, okay, I think now I want to add in the journal. So I've only added in my journal since July. And then, and I only added a bunch of those properties really recently. And now that I have it set up where I do this kind of, you know, reflecting on yesterday at the start of the day, and then also at the end of the day, checking in, it does make filling out the journal much easier. Yeah. I did notice a blind spot, which was I hadn't connected my workouts um, in a really simple way. And so that's something that I then added in. I think it was just cut off, but now I'll actually remember, oh yeah, I want to add that to the day. So Uh, I would say for anyone out there who sees all the tracking and thinks, oh, hell no, then I would say, don't do it yet. (laughs) Like, don't. Start small. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yep, self-tracking is a trend. And I'm sure with API, Mm -hmm. there'll be all sorts of integrations and people using their Apple Watch and all that good stuff. I was thinking about this yesterday because, as you know, so I just got the Ura Ring um, and it's telling me about my sleep quality and readiness score and at first i thought oh how can the api help me and then i realized no i actually think it's better if i add that to my first things first so i have actually actually i'm gonna do that right now um i that is one of the things that i did add those yesterday so i can start tracking those scores but i actually do think there is value in adding things manually because it forces you to interact with that data if it just auto populates and you never look at it and it doesn't doesn't interpret it or mean anything um, I would say there's something to be said about manually adding information absolutely agree with that uh Caroline Carolina asking about how to do the weekly review I'm not sure if I have a safe uh sanitized version of my weekly review I don't know if you do but um I can I can certainly open it up and talk through some of the questions and things that I I ask myself when I'm doing that and same with you Kat I don't know if you have like well my honest answer is I have fallen desperately behind in my (laughs) weekly review and I have a template I could show you in theory what the weekly review is um so I would say you show yours. There's something I, c- I can show the template, but more or less I can actually address something that I changed, which I think will help. And uh, but yeah, if you want to show your weekly review, I'll just I'll go. S- yeah, uh, I don't think it's totally, <laughs> totally safe. Um, but this is this is the general flow and the pace. And, you know, an ideal one would be. It'd be great to spend actually two hours at the end of the week, like really getting things into place. It rarely happens that it's a full two hours, but if I can do even like minimum 30 minutes to to go through some of this stuff. So the decluttering, tidying your workspace, getting all the things that are, you know, left on my desk, cleared out of the cleared out of the office, old mugs, all that fun stuff. Uh, processing recent media clippings. So I would go through my library and I would add a summary, ideally, and tags. Right. Sometimes when you send stuff into Notion and it does that uh, page title stuff. So I would go through, add topics and tags, and I would do this for the courses that I'm reading, notes and ideas, swipe file and things like that. Um, I'm just going to double check before I scroll down any further. But once I've done the decluttering stuff and a sort of mind sweep and dump all the ideas and just kind of loose threads that are in my brain, get those out. Then I look at the actions database filtered to the current week. So review what you accomplished this week. And then I show 
uh, review what you planned to do but didn't complete? And then does that need to be restructured, rescheduled, moved into the calendar? I also look at any content that I published as well, just to you know get a sense of, okay, what did I do this week? Tweets, uh, you know, newsletters that were sent and all that and celebrate that. I review my journal entries, just make sure all of those have all the properties, you know, feelings and all of that stuff filled out. And then I show my weekly agenda filtered pretty small, um, just with a couple fields to show me my gratitude, challenges of that week, wins of the week, and all of that is roll-ups from the journal. So because I do daily journaling and because I'm tracking this stuff every day, the weekly agenda basically becomes a container for all of that. And I just am displaying that information through roll-ups. And that way I can be like, oh, right, this was a really tough week. I can look at my effectiveness score and be like, oh, wow, it was really low this week. Or um, I do a roll-up of the feelings too, just to get a vibe on like, how was I feeling? How happy was I about this week? Um, and then the improvement database is probably similar to even the way you do your your practices cat. So I try to choose something from the improvement database, like a little message to myself, like tidy before going to yeah. bed was last night's <laughs> improvement. So that shows up too. And over the week, I can start to see what are the points of improvement that I keep naming over and over again? What are the mm -hmm. most frequent one frequent ones? So if I notice that there's a gap there and I keep choosing it, but I'm not doing anything about it, it might be time to add a new habit, do something a little bit differently, yeah. get an accountability buddy, etc. So that's just one of the like reflection portions of the week. And then I do a get current, review your current goals. If you use a goals database, move things around, uh, add any new ones that might have emerged, upcoming actions. And so you just start moving from like reflecting on what's been happening into moving and planning for the week ahead. I review my daily and weekly practices and then I update my daily themes, which I think Kat, you're also using that daily theme. So every day of the week kind of has key projects that are a focus mm -hmm. and I just adjust, is that project complete? Do I need to move something else into focus? Yeah. And so the whole, I try to, again, take about an hour to go through this page and it's all just embedding existing databases that I'm using all the time. The journal database, the tasks database, projects database and goals. Those are kind of the main ones that, that I'm working on in that page. Um, yeah. yeah, and so I don't know if you, if you want to add anything there in terms of well, your I was going to say, yeah. so I do, I can show you, I have a, a, just an empty week open that I could show. So one of the things though I want to address is, and I see in the comments, like why is maintaining a weekly review so damn hard? And mm -hmm. one of my problems, and I, and I know this upon looking back, is that I was saving too much to the end of the week to do, and it felt daunting. And I just didn't want to do it. And so I would dread it. So what I had set up before is I would have my new week, ha set the dates, the month tag, et cetera. So, and I would have stuff like, did I make a meal plan? Did I follow that meal plan? And I have a few roll-ups, rolling up to my gratitude, rolling up to my, my Knowledge Hub or library. And uh, it connects now to my journal and I can see the journal dates. And down here, so each week, I do use this week template to actually create my journal entries for the week so i create them one at a time and i have just recently updated this now to board view by relation before it was just by the select and so i had i had put together this weekly review where i said okay uh review so the life plan that's from michael hyatt uh and haven't reviewed it in a while and then i have you know what can i go through and i do have a link to my process page where i can go through some of that stuff this would just even imagining doing this would just stop me in my tracks. But now I started doing it every day. And so I know that that's going to be a much cleaner experience later. I also have for my calendar, like check last week, check next week, and then action planning. I really need to update this. So what I would say is that it was too much. I was waiting too long to do these things. And then I just dread it. The other thing for me is I am an obliger, meaning I work really well with external accountability. So if if it's just me telling myself I'm going to do a weekly review, odds are it's not going to happen. And that's one of the things. That <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Um, rude odds me, are, I'm sorry. Odds are it's not, that's totally okay. Um, it's you know it might not happen. So then having you know, maybe scheduling time or as you said, an accountability partner or something like that. So I would say now that I am doing that daily review and making it fun by adding, you know, that little gif at the bottom of the day, 
I can revise my weekly review in a way where, as you said, that all, every if every day you do that daily review, it's going to contribute to the weekly review mm -hmm. and make a big difference. Because I really, I still have struggled with the amount that I wanted to do in a weekly review and what was actually <laughs> feasible. So kind of setting myself up for, for failure there. Um, I know Gail was asking, okay, has anyone asked if the group feature can be used to set up a weekly calendar view? So Gail, we did, we actually did that at the very beginning of the session when I showed my uh, journal database by board day, by day of the week and then grouped by week. So I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the session, but I think that's a, a pretty close explanation of how to do that. So you can go back and check that out. Um, Lysol was asking about how do you get your board view so narrow? So depending on your pages, I always make pages that have databases embedded inside them full width. So you can go to the top uh, three dots on the right hand side of your screen and make your pages full width. If you ever need to move sideways, hold shift while you're using scroll on your mouse and you'll be able to kind of move uh, left to right and check out more of your board views. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, my face was priceless as I accidentally booted Kat out of <laughs> the session momentarily. Okay, cool. Not sure if I missed anyone's uh, <laughs> questions there. <laughs> Do you see an offer to keep hold of, uh, to keep me accountable, but with devil <laughs> horns? So that uh, <laughs> that is both <laughs> intriguing and terrifying at the same time. Like, well, what happens if I don't do it? Amazing. And I know we've got it. I mean, Notion does attract a lot of folks with ADHD. I know that that conversation's come up quite a bit. Uh, Liza, I also only just dis discovered in July, I got diagnosed uh, just a couple months ago. And I've just noticed a lot of folks with ADHD are very drawn to Notion, I think, again, for the ability to have a little more control over how things look, but it is often overwhelming when you're just getting started and just don't know kind of where to start. So it's a little intimidating. But uh, yeah. Yes, like Twitch. We're just, it's this pretty casual, pretty casual fun live stream here. Uh, Friday. Friday yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that, that folks want to see or a use case you've been curious about? Even for, you know, Kat and I, we can make future videos about this too, right? We each kind well, of. Well, I see, I see, uh, you have to make a fully rounded setup in 15 minutes. What are your actions? What, so I'd, I'd like more clarity on that. Like, yeah, because it obviously that depends what? too. Is it a is it a team a shared team workspace? Is it a personal uh, workspace? Is it for getting things done? Is it for personal development and tracking? So I would prioritize different things depending. But I think almost every workspace probably needs some sort of master task database, a projects database. Um, not everybody is as stoked about goal setting and that sort of thing. But I love my goals database and making sure each project kind of supports and connects to a project. Um, I mean, even the the journal and weekly agenda and all that stuff are pretty like they're nice to haves, but you know, in fifteen minutes, if you know Notion pretty well, you can build a pretty pretty highly functioning setup in fifteen minutes for sure. Well, and that's where I think. So you and I were actually talking about this earlier this week. Is this idea of, you know, so first of all, one of the things that is probably underutilized is just capturing information using text. Just text blocks, enter it, enter. Like text, type it, enter, type, enter. So if you need to do a mind sweep or a brain dump, just getting everything out there in just on the page because those can be dragged. And so now if you imagine, let's just take a situation where you have a little side by side, you have two columns in Notion and on one column, you just have write down all the things that are on your mind that you wanna do. And then on the other column, you have a simple, let's say table or a list that is grouped by project. You can just then take those blocks, drag them into that group, drag them into the group, drag them in the group. You could very easily get yourself organized with that simple activity and it would take almost no time at all. Absolutely. So try, I would try that. <laughs> and I know there was some mention in the, in the chat about feeling like you need to get your set, you can't start until your setup is perfect. Um, that is, 
a challenge because, I mean, even what my space looks like now, one, it's not perfect. It will never be perfect. I don't feel like it will ever end because I'm always growing as a person. I have different needs quarter by quarter, the way that I'm using my space. When you bring in a new team member, suddenly things need to change. So your processes, I think, should always be evolving. Now, of course, I'm not saying I don't think people should be rebuilding their space all the time. But once you understand and, and learn what Notion can do, um, you're, you're always going to be kind of iterating and refining it. So if I had waited until I knew how to do what I knew today, I would never have started in Notion. And uh, it was useful to me two years ago, and it's even more useful to me than it is now. And it's still not perfect. And I have to be okay with that. And I think uh, letting go of those perfectionistic tendencies is, I think, one of the number one challenges for, for new folks coming into Notion. Yes. If I had sounds set up on this broadcaster, I would play them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too good. Uh, one day, one day. That's one on, my day. It, it's yeah. on my list. It's on my list as a project is to learn how to use this very fancy, expensive piece of equipment sitting on my desk. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know I'm still figuring out this whole stream deck situation. And I, I um, at one point, Ben came in and was, was talking about something and I was able to be like, oh, the sad trombone and I was able to push it and it, it worked. Well, but. and I have one. So I have the DJ air horn on my Ecamm, but it doesn't play into the microphone because uh, I'm not running. So it's like only you hearing stream, it. Yeah. I could play the, the DJ air horn, but no one else will hear it. So you can be like could, snickering and laughing to yourself. I own yeah. delight. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> that, that was fun. <laughs> My brain is too advanced for my limited knowledge of Notion. I have so many ideas in my head. Well, good thing, sister, you have a sister who can teach you how to use Notion. So give me a call sometime. Uh, like and subscribe. So <laughs> fun. Okay, yeah. cool. Any other... I mean, I know we're kind of coming up. We've already uh, been an hour in a bit. I'm, I'm happy. I, don't, I didn't actually check with you, Kat. I'm like, how long are we doing this? Is this an hour? Is this 90 yeah. minutes? So just... Well, luckily it's a Friday afternoon and uh, we can do yeah. what we want because we're big exactly. girls. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. I feel like there's I, maybe a sound effect for that too. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what's, a, what's a big girl sound effect? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Hazel, yes, of course. I think that this is the major issue with Notion is is for sure how long it takes to to get set up. It's the the blessing and the curse. It's the strength and the weakness of Notion. Again, it's so powerful. It can do anything, but you have to know what you want it to do. And that's really hard, especially if part of the reason people are trying to come to Notion is they're trying to get more organized. But then you kind of have to almost come up with your own organizational system to be able to use yeah. it effectively. So yeah, it's it's very common. I think everybody kind of struggles with this when they're just getting started. But I feel like there's often a moment where it clicks, right? Or there's like several moments where you're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I kind of see what yeah. it can do now. So it's like you have to kind of see someone's use that looks very similar to kind of what you can envision for yourself. And that's why I think, yeah. again, showing different use cases, you're like, oh, okay, I, I see what's possible. And I would, I would also say something that helped me early on was having some guardrails around when I could work on my space. And that was really helpful because I would say I can only work on this outside of traditional sort of working hours, unless I purposely set aside a day. So maybe I want to book Thursday and Friday off in my calendar to just focus on an overhaul of a certain area of my space, really want to focus on it. You could do that, or you could just say evenings and weekends or whatever, depending on your work schedule. So that was helpful for just knowing if it's in the middle of the day and I'm supposed to be getting stuff done, me tinkering or trying to fix this <laughs> might not be the best use of time. So that's definitely something that, you know, I, I found really helpful and then having some dedicated time. So I only just set up this daily me's and my get that kind of starting out the day. That's very new to me. And um, you don't have to figure it all out all at once. So yeah, I nor, think nor I would should say that you as try. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely don't. Try. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't bother. Um, Mohammed was asking how long it took the, uh, the para method. So Here's another great example. When I first started using Notion and I did Building a Second Brain, I know Kat did that course as well by Tiago. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the projects, areas, resources, archives was a really great starting point to get used to Notion. Treat everything like in your life like a project, associate it with actions, have all your resources in one place. That was a really great starting point. But then as I started to use Notion more and I kind of developed my own, you know, my own productivity methods that kind of drew from getting things done. It drew from my own ADHD and realizing like I don't always listen to what I put on my list and I needed a different way to look at stuff. So I evolved it. And so if I had waited again until I found that perfect system, uh, you don't really know until you're in it and you're playing with it. So uh, Paramethod, I would say it probably took a couple weeks just to kind of like wrap my head around applying that within Notion. And uh, for the last year, I think since January, I've been using my own like horizon system where it's like days, weeks, months, and I can kind of jump to any time scale. And that feels really good. I'm going to do that for a while. Talk to me next year. Maybe I'll have a different uh, methodology, but it's flexible I, enough. I'm, I'm always using the same databases. It's always the same databases. This I think some, something that did help me, because I it did take building a second brain this past spring, was when I started to look at those categories of what is a project or area which are more action driven versus a resource which supports those, that did help me organize my space. I'm very uh, meticulous about the sidebar. I want a very clean, clean sidebar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so for me, having my resource, I just have, I have a page where I hold all of my resources and I can pull from them. I, I very rarely actually go in to seek them out, but I can, I know where they all live. And to be able to just categorize and classify them, I also use a lot of color coding. So all of my resources are green and I have that area where I can just go and pull from them. So that was really helpful for me, I think with respect to, to para. And Griffith was saying, can we buy Notion templates for beginners? Do we need to figure it out on our own? Oh man, the templates conversation is always an interesting one too, because I think people want to find a template that will kind of, you know, be the all in one and do everything for them. But at the end of the day, there is still an element of you deciding, do I, do I think about tasks in terms of time and calendar? Do I think about them in terms of uh, next, later, today kind of thing? And so it does take inevitably a bit of learning notion on your own. Yeah. So I, I think um, you've mentioned this before too, Kat, like you love to download people's templates, but then just use it to kind of see how they've created connections and click through and, and maybe delete properties and explore, but then still yeah. go and build your own from scratch. Yeah, it actually, I would, I was just thinking, so I absolutely do that. I almost never adopt a template. And when I do, I usually kind of resent some of the properties that I don't use, but then I'm too lazy to change them. But I will say that a really great piece of advice I heard a long time ago, which still stands is look outside for inspiration and inside for guidance, just for life in general. And I love that, that whole concept. Same thing with Notion, look outside for inspiration, but inside for guidance, meaning you can be inspired by what other people do, but you have to ask yourself, what is going to work for me? What problems am I trying to solve? What do I want my space to look like? Only you can answer that. No one else can tell you what you're going to want, but other people's work and notion and the fact that so many people in this community are fantastic at sharing what they do. They give away free resources. They record all these amazing videos. There's almost too much inspiration, but usually you know it when you find it. And most people will kind of find the people that they want to emulate, but don't try to reproduce what another person does. I love that. Yeah. Here, here. Yeah, it's very, very tempting to be seeking that like one perfect system and, and one perfect template. But uh, the perfect template is the one that you build yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. it. Yeah, great way to put it, Kat. Um, yeah, even like my sister was just saying, Natalie, honestly, figure it out on your own. Otherwise, personally, I found it too confusing. And, you know, even in the course, Notion Mastery, we used to give people like the all in one. Here you go. Everything's connected. There's roll ups. It's super advanced. And most people that open it up are like, oh, my gosh, run away and never touch Notion again, because it's too confusing because it's so based on my daily, weekly, monthly habits and practices. It assumes that you have a weekly review process. Not everybody does. You kind of have to work into that. So I do think Notion is a tool you grow into. And so now, you know, as Kat and I have discussed, like giving people less, like what is the fewest number of properties and, yeah. and databases that people need when they're first starting to kind of cover most bases and then add as needed. And that relates to properties as well as adding new tables and databases and, and all sorts of stuff. 
Well, and also I think the beauty of getting hands on with your own, even if you take someone's template, but then spend the time to adapt it and start using it. So, you know, what data is actually in there, because when they're all connected without your involvement, you don't even know what to pull from what you don't know how to make use Why do of I this need information. This? <laughs> so yeah, I think actually getting your hands on there and starting to use it and understand what is the information and what's the purpose. This is something yesterday that I was thinking a lot about is why do we have every property in a given database? Like what, what's the purpose it is serving? Is it helping us to reflect on something? Like maybe it's seeing a roll up of how many notes do we have attached to this? Or is it asking us to review our effectiveness level for the day? Is it just trying to connect things so I can see, oh, you know, what other notes do I have in my Notion workspace that are also connected to this content? Like, why do we have properties in our database? And I know for some people they're like, yeah, no, I don't need to think about that. But the more you understand the purpose for what is in there, what am I adding? What am I collecting? The more you can be strategic about choosing what's actually going to go in a database and how I'm going to set it up. I love that. And I think it takes people a little bit to kind of wrap their head around. They're like afraid to delete properties or, oh, but if I delete that, oh no. And there's like a little bit of anxiety around that. And it's, it's, it's so easy to delete, add, remove. But I think until people are comfortable with the tool, it's like, oh no, I'm going to break something or it's going to... Um, and I, I, I think it was Lysol that might have mentioned this too. For anyone that's kind of like, oh gosh, my space is a mess. Where do I, you know, how do I start? I'm tempted to tell people to make a sandbox highlight all your pages and chuck them in the sandbox and kind of build your sidebar from scratch. Whether it's, I need a page that is a dashboard to tell me what is due today. I'm just going to have today in the dashboard. I'm just going to have a personal page. I'm just going to have a, but like fewer, if you had three space, three pages in your sidebar, you know, what would those three pages be? So um, you can always reactivate those pages as you're ready to, to yeah. bring them back out of the closet. And I think I would say that's another concept from Para is that archive. You can just pull it into the archive, trust that if you need to go see something later, you can go see something later and it's all hell is not going to break loose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even if you did lose some data, it's probably if you were debating whether to delete it or not, it's probably not the most important data anyway. So, you know, we move and forward. You can always on. restore it. Yeah. Restore it as needed. It's fine. Yeah. I'm all for, yeah. I'm all for moving forward from scratch. I know someone had a question about Evernote uh, and I'm a big fan of not bringing your baggage into Notion. Don't import all your stuff <laughs> just to have the exact same stuff. So you're starting with a mess, just bring in what you need when you need it. Yeah. So that's sort of just in time project management in the mess of Phoenix will rise. I love that. Yeah. I like that. That's so funny. <laughs> Oh, super fun. Well, I think we could probably, you know, wrap it up at, at the, mm -hmm. the 90 minutes. So thanks everybody who, who joined us and asked questions and were curious about yeah. this stuff. I mean, it's pretty easy and fun to talk about this stuff. So if there's something that you'd want to see us cover next time, it'd be cool to have Kat again. Kat is a co-instructor on Notion Mastery, by the way. So she's going to be supporting me and delivering some live versions of the trainings that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, and Kat, I don't know if you want to uh, share maybe where people can find you online too, because I have personally taken Kat's courses and I've le learned a ton in terms of yeah. the Ecamm, elevating your presentation side of things. So... I always Let me stuff see like in the that. chat if I can add. Uh, did that work? Yeah. Thank you, Text Expander. Oh wait. Except in YouTube, they want that. <laughs> they want the whole <laughs> thing. So, I what I primarily focus on is helping people to create more uh, engaging and professional online presentations. But I'm also a Notion nerd, so sometimes I talk about that. But a lot of my content is really on how do you come off more professional and how do you engage people in the virtual environment so that is what a lot of my content is on if anyone's interested you go check that out I do have a few notion videos as well and if you're in the notion mastery community I'm in there as well so excited to work amazing. on some of this live training that we're putting together amazing I know rest rescue that's my next I gotta I gotta level up my uh my ecam and Kat's going to be here in person next week, actually, which is so exciting. So yeah. she's going to help me uh, get my my ecam even more leveled up. Yeah, elevate elevate your <laughs> exactly. your ecam game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Amazing. Well, thanks everybody who came today. And yes, you can always catch the replay. Somebody was asking about that. You'll be able to catch it. I think it's at the same, I'm assuming it's the same URL. It'll show up in, in my videos on my stream anyway. Um, yeah. And if you've got follow-up questions that you want us to cover, like drop them in the chat. And um, it's always great for future video ideas. I feel like with Notion, there's never yeah. an end to the questions that you could possibly answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and at the speed that they are rolling out updates, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I ke kept it in light mode today, so I didn't have to trigger myself with the dark mode colors. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other discussion. Whole other conversation. And maybe some therapy. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you, everybody who came today. Really nice to see some familiar faces, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bye.